Hey, I'm curious, after going back and watching the tape last night, how you thought your offensive line held up and how close or far away you are from where you guys need to be there. Well, you know, first off, I'm really pleased with how they played as a unit together. It was the first time they got to go in a competitive situation against a foreign opponent. So obviously a lot of different looks, both in individuals with the personnel as well as collectively as a scheme. Thought throughout the night they did make some necessary adjustments. Um, well, they make a lot of improvement going forward, uh, but I'm pleased with the way they competed and the way Mark made some adjustments in the game. And what did you think of how uh, Cam Fleming played yesterday at right tackle, first time in there for you guys? Yeah, I thought Cam fought his butt off last night, you know, and obviously he went against one of the best players in the National Football League with T.J. Watt, and, you know, he did a good job overall on him. Obviously, there's a player, too, that you've always got to go back on and how can we correct it going forward. But I'm very pleased with what Cam did for us. Thanks. Hi, Leonard. Hey, Joe, how much tolerance do you have for top skill players like Saquon Barkley or Evan Ingram, you know, dropping passes, making mistakes? I mean, these are guys who are going to carry your team. But it's not, obviously it's early and you guys have a shortened camp. I, I just – how do you balance that evaluating their week one performances? Well, everyone has to play better. So we got to keep the emphasis on the fundamentals, number one. And, you know, I talked the other day about, you know, these first four weeks kind of being an extension of preseason. I think we saw some of that last night in terms of the timing and the field being on the field collectively together. You know, the simulated scrimmages, the reality is they can't simulate a game against an opponent. So we've got to go ahead and learn from last night. We've got to get up to the speed of the game, and we have to make a lot of gains going forward. But to me, Pat, the emphasis needs to stay on the fundamentals, and that should bridge the gap on seeing what we see every day in practice and how it carries over the game. Thanks. Okay. Hey, Joe, i got uh, two questions about the first drive. Uh, when you had the fourth and one at the 40, uh, why not just go for it there? You know, we didn't think it was the right time in the game right there. We had an option to go for it or not. Uh, you know, we're going to put faith in our defense there. And we figured we'd punt the ball on down there, which obviously worked out. It was after the delay penalty right there. But, you know, that wasn't the time in the game to do it. And then when you have fourth and goal to two, any thoughts of going for it there? Or you're kicking that, no doubt? You know what? We had three swings of the bat already down there in the low red area. At that point, we want to come away with some points. Pittsburgh's a team you can't, you know, just go on down there and come away with no points, which, you know, obviously happened later in the game. So at that point right there in this specific game, we want to make sure we got on the board. I wanted to ask you about Andrew Thomas after going back and watching the film. What did you see from your rookie left tackle? And, um, you know, what stood out as far as the first performance? You know what? I think he showed that he's got a lot of ability in this, li in this league. And, uh, and there's a reason he's here. He fought really hard. I think he played well overall. He learned a lot of valuable lessons going against top opponents like Bud Dupree. That's something you can't simulate. I don't care who you got in your defensive front. He's just different than guys you may have. He plays with a distinct motor. He's a tough competitor. You have to have a lot of respect for him. And, you know, for Andrew to have his first NFL competition in a game against a guy like that, that says a lot for how he was able to hold up throughout the game. Just one follow-up. Uh, I assume when you talked to Daniel about the, the second interception, uh, did he tell you if he was trying to throw the ball out of the end zone? Did he see a receiver that he was trying to throw the ball to? Obviously, we'll have a chance to ask him that as a follow-up when we talk to him next, but I'm just curious what you guys talked about on that play. You know, to be honest with you, I talked to him briefly in the locker room after the game, but it wasn't directly about any specific play. It was just in general about how he came out of the game, how he was doing. And then it's the players' day off today. These guys will be through working out. We don't have players' meetings with them until tomorrow. So I haven't had the opportunity to have that conversation, Art. Um, obviously, there's things we have to clean up in decision-making. But uh, I tell you right now, I think that guy stood in the pocket with a lot of courage last night, delivered a lot of really good balls for us really controlled the flow of the game, did a heck of a job under pressure. I'm very pleased with the way Daniel played last night. I know the rest of the team feels very confident with him in there, calling the signals for us. There's obviously a couple plays that we're going to have to correct and move on from. But, man, I'll tell you what, we woke up this morning. I'm glad he's on our team. I'm Rock. You know, if you were playing the Giants, you would no doubt want to be stopping Saquon Barkley. Mike Tomlin did, took that strategy in last night. I'm sure Matt Nagy is going to have the same same one next week. How do you get around that? How do you is it is it playing better or are there scheme ways that you can allow him to to be productive? Well, you know Saquon played hard last night, and uh, look collectively we have to do a better job. You know, coaching, putting our players in the right positions, and we have to do a better job. You know, executing the techniques and the schemes we have in per game plan. It's a collective effort. No one person can do better for all of us to have success. And then if I could just follow up with another topic, um, yep. did, it, did anything feel different being a head coach last night, you know, the, going through the process, uh, you know, walking on and off the field? 
There were definitely some differences last night, Tom. Obviously, um, I think I've grown accustomed to a lot of that stuff throughout just being, you know, at practice and scrimmages and handling a lot of the different phases. There's a difference in game. It was the first game that I haven't had a specific position group or group of guys to actually get out there on the field. So to be honest with you, one of the weirdest things was not having that clock in my head of I've got to be out there in the field at a certain time. Um, obviously, I want to be out there as early as possible, watch warm up, see how the guys are doing, see how they're moving around, get a feel for their energy. Um, but there's obviously some differences in there. I didn't feel uh, weird about anything. It was just a little bit of a change. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Morris. Hey, Joe. Hey, Paul. Uh, Joe, um, win or lose, this is going to be your first day after. Um, you know, um, Sunday, Monday, whatever it is, Tuesday. Um, when you look at it, how are you going to balance between breaking the team down, you know, and criticizing them when they, when they perform badly, building them back up, encouragement versus, you know, laying down the law? And, and are you going to publicly criticize players? Because you really have not done that much or at all. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I think it's my job to support the players. I think it's our job internally to make corrections and adjustments that are necessary. Um, but I don't think you're going to see too much different from me than you've seen already, Paul, if that kind of paints a little bit of a picture for you. I kind of am who I am every day. Um, but internally, we'll address things always. We're going to be very blunt and honest. We're very transparent in this organization. And we'll always be very direct with what we have to do to correct it. That being said, I'd say on a weekly basis, Paul, uh, you know, that always will be a little bit different. You know, sometimes the team needs some encouraging. Sometimes they need, you know, come to Jesus meeting. So whatever each week calls for, that's what we're going to go ahead and have. You know, I think that no matter what tone you do it in, it's always about teaching. All right, players don't go out there and intentionally make mistakes. They don't go out there and intentionally screw up. So whatever tone it requires to get the message across, we better be teaching them so that when they leave that meeting, it's clear in how they have to improve and what they have to correct going forward. That to me is the emphasis for myself and for every coach on the staff. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Paul. Hey, Joe. Is this week based following that question up? Is this week a teaching meeting or is it one that, hey guys, it's only one game. Let's get let's just play better next week. That's classified. I could tell you, but I have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it, it'll be heavy teaching. And look, again, there's it, going to be unique situations with the individuals as well as the team collectively. Um, look, our guys competed their butts off last night. They played hard. You know, what they need is just we need to make sure that we eliminate some mistakes and we understand going forward the formula for us to be able to win games. And that's our focus on right now. What's impressed you most about uh, Darius Slayton since you got your hands on him? And, and, and what, what impressed you particularly about how he played last night? Because he obviously had a big night. Well, I think he played fast last night, and that's definitely something that's kind of one of those, yeah, Joe, we got that. He's a fast guy. But there's a difference between being a fast guy and playing fast. And he plays fast. He comes off the ball fast. He makes decisions fast. He cuts fast. You know, he plays aggressive in traffic to make the catches. You know, that, that to me is something you can't replicate. And there's a lot of people out there that can run a 40 at a good time. And then there's people that play fast as well. And that's definitely something that stands out with him. He was able to have a lot of production for us last night. That was something that, you know, helped us within the game. We're going to need that going forward from him. And then we need some other guys as well to make sure we keep them involved. Thanks. Last one here, Ralph. Hey, Joe, just uh, want to circle back to the offensive line real quick. Um, I know you're trying to be positive with them, but I'm wondering the issues that you had um, with protection and blocking last night. How much of that do you attribute to uh, the lack of chemistry from not having – a normal preseason, and also, if you don't mind, um, what were your thoughts on Nick Gates in his first game as, as a center? Yeah, I think Nick Gates overall handled himself pretty well. Again, there's always things you have to improve on. Um, we're going to look at the tape. We're going to be very critical about that. But I'm very pleased with the way he came out and competed last night, handled a lot of calls, a lot of different fronts from these guys. You know, had a lot of – look, these guys played against some, you know, boy dogs out there last night, okay, some good players. And – you know, I think Nick did a good job overall really, you know, standing up to it. Uh, like I said, obviously, Mark and Ben will have him. We'll go ahead through some corrections. As a unit, you know, we've just got to go ahead and keep improving collectively. And that's the biggest thing. The one thing about those bigs is it doesn't matter how one guy plays. It's all five have to play in sync all the time. And they have to get that chemistry, as you're referring to, going forward. You know, I have no doubt there's going to be a lot of improvement going forward. I'm very confident in all the guys we have involved in our offensive line both the five from last night and all the other guys on our roster. So we're going to keep working with these guys and improve them.